And joining me now with more, Chairman of GOPAC, David Avella, and former Obama foreign policy advisor, David Tafuri. David, I'll start with you. What's the chance that something gets done and the government doesn't shut down? Well, I don't think something's going to get done this week, unfortunately. But I think they'll so probably think a avoid... shutdown happens? They'll, I think they'll avoid a shutdown by, by uh, passing a CR, a mm -hmm. continuing resolution, for a week or two and put this off for another week or two and then hopefully get a deal done during that time. Um, your outstanding report uh, and reporter highlighted the issues. It's DACA and it's military spending. The administration wants the military spending. They also want border security and some money for the wall. The Democrats are pushing forward on DACA. They're afraid if DACA isn't part of this package, it will never happen. There's a lot of support around the country for DACA, so maybe a deal can be worked out, but we've moved backwards since last week. Well, well, I mean, last week, that meeting was phenomenal, by the way. I, I was delighted to watch all that and to see uh, how those negotiations take place, and I was extraordinarily optimistic after seeing it, but it feels as though we've been reduced once again, David Avella, to sound bites and this standoff with both sides. I mean, David, you just said that the, that the Dems are uh, w perhaps willing to negotiate here um, David Tafori, that is, but, but David Avella, I, I don't get that sense. I mean, they're saying there's not going to be one single dime that's going for the wall. This obsession also with a cuss word is amateurish. We have a major issue that we need to deal with in this country, and even Democrats that are outside Washington, D.C., New York, and California see it as a distraction. As we heard yesterday, D Democratic Senator Joe Manchin saying that his Democratic colleague shouldn't use this curse word to stop the work that needs to be done on immigration. Oh, Americans want to see results. And why we can't find common ground on securing the border, getting criminals out of this country, making sure that we're bringing a merit-based system, that we're getting rid of chain migration, all things that many Democrats have supported sitting in Congress have supported in the past. Why they can't support it now? Because it says Trump and not Obama yeah, on it. David, is that true? No matter what happens out of this administration, if Donald Trump's name on it is, if Donald Trump's name is on it, do the Democrats simply want to resist? because it's him. No, I don't agree with that. I mean, you heard Senator Durbin. He said he felt the hope when President Trump said he'd sign anything Congress brought before him. Now this thing happened with this curse word, but it's not just about the curse word. It's about President Trump's misunderstanding of the situation. He seemed to not even be familiar with the fact that Haitians were hoping to get some solution to the TPS ending and, and the other countries that are part of the TPS. He seems totally unfamiliar with the most important issues and instead just moved to denigrate other countries which is not helpful for us. It's not helpful for our foreign mm -hmm. policy. You see around the country, people don't like it. People know that but there are lots racist? of Haitians that are hardworking, that are contributing further, to our economy. It, the question is, is it racist? You, you say he's denigrating these countries, but is he denigrating them in a racist way? Because when you start talking about racism, I've said on this show, that is about the worst thing you can say about anyone. And I'll tell you, Americans are not racist. And so if you start pointing fingers and say someone is a racist, well, it seems to me that that is politically motivated because the Democrats are trying to do what they can do to rally their base at a time when the economy's doing great. Here's, you got to hear this, David. I want you to hear what Senator Cory Booker from New Jersey had to say. Here we go. The commander in chief in an Oval Office meeting referring to people from African countries and Haitians with the most vile and vulgar language. The language festers. When ignorance and bigotry is allied with power, it is a dangerous force in our country. Your silence and your amnesia is complicity. Somebody's running for office, I guess. David uh, Avella, what's your reaction to that? We'll go to, to for you in a moment. It, it is all about politics. It's what the Democrats say about every Republican president. George W. Bush was a racist, and he wasn't very smart. Ronald Reagan was a racist, and he wasn't very smart. So what do they do? Let's bring out the playbook. Donald Trump, he's a racist, and he's not very smart. Well, yeah, I, I think the word they used was ignorant and racist. Um, David Tafori, is he? Well, you see here, you, you see in Senator Booker's comments, frustration. This is frustration that's been mounting for the entire year that the president has been in office. He's done many things that are racist, like for refusing to call out the, uh, the demonstrators in Charlottesville uh, mm -hmm. and, and many other things that are very hurtful to our minority communities and they're very hurtful to those who contribute yeah, to our economy. That's a and big this thing is to another, call someone a racist, this, David. 
but he has said things that are racist. I don't know him personally. I'm not going to call Did him a racist. Did you think what he said he about these countries comments. was racist? It is, it is the type of thing that a racist person says. Yes, same with Charlottesville. Same with no, refusing you're, you're to... You're inferring something re there. Refusing, I mean, I heard it. I'll refusing you, to criticize mm. white supremacists in Charlottesville. I, his, I'm not going to go back his, to Charlottesville. His, Everyone knows how I felt about that. But in this, I'm fair, David Tafori, and I've called out Charlottesville. I did not like how he handled that situation because I don't think you can give so a agree. leg up to any member of the media that is trying to paint you in a certain way. But in this particular case, this was a closed door meeting. You know, I, I've talked about, I, I've reported, by the way, from a ton of hell holes all over the world. And I do refer to them because, uh, well, I'm a polite lady who doesn't use that other language, but I, I call them hell holes. Do you think it has anything to do with the color of someone's skin? Absolutely, positively not. And everything to do with crime rates and everything to do with poverty, and everything to do with corruption. That's why they're hell holes, not because of the color of someone's skin. And for the Democrats to try and use this as a political tool, that seems to me just utterly despicable and gets us completely off topic, David Tafori. But the Democrats and Republicans came to his office and they presented an immigration plan. And it included some extension for the TPRS participants from Haiti. President Trump, with his, with his comment, seemed to be completely unaware of this group of people who were seeking some uh, solution in Congress. So it's not only just what he said, it's that he seemed so ignorant because, of the key okay. policies so that we're, were back involved to, to here. The, the same and, playbook and again, have, as David Avella told us. How, do we, how can we have a president lead us racism. to lead us to a resolution of these crises if he well, doesn't even have you, you basic have knowledge of, 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 you, of what needs to be decided here and what have Congress has to do? time with this line of argument when you got a market that's soaring, a GDP that's growing, and wages that are growing, and employment uh, levels at, at the best they've ever been. But good luck with it. David Avella, David Tafori, thank you.